So presumably, as we, we've been sending more satellites, we know that's increasing. So I guess we assume Space Junk's growing with time, but what does it actually look like? So here's a graph of the number of tracked objects in space, okay, the, the yep. big ones. Yep. And you can see the blue dotted line is the number of spacecraft, and you can see that started climbing very rapidly recently with yep. SpaceX and microsatellites and CubeSats yep. and things like that. But what you can actually see is the amount of space junk increased much earlier than that. Okay. And there were a couple of big leaps. Yeah, I mean, there's very clear jumps here and here and here. So this was in 2007, right? Yeah, and what these are, um, the 2007 was when the Chinese government tested an anti-satellite weapon. They blew up one of their own satellites. And, I and guess... that turned one dead satellite <laughs> into 3,000 bits of junk, each of which is still big enough to blow a hole in the wall of a spacecraft. Yeah. And what about the second one? Um, the third one's also, that was a Russian anti-satellite test. So, again, one turns into thousands. Uh, and we, the, the rumour is that that was trying to scare SpaceX off by saying yeah. that we can make your entire orbit uninhabitable by blowing up a up spacecraft. Um, number two was actually a collision. What happened was a, uh, a defunct Russian military communication satellite and a functioning American... Iridium satellite. Iridium yeah, yeah. communication satellite smashed into each other. They were both Iridium-33 and Cosmos-2251. So they started in different orbits. That's the key, yeah. right? They started in different orbits. So they were both in highly inclined low Earth orbits. And unfortunately, they were a bit too close to each other. And somewhere over the north of Siberia, bang, they hit each other. And they produced a huge cloud of debris that, to begin with, was all in the same location. Yep. But as time went on, the debris spread out. So, I mean, this is essentially half an orbit as it's gone around. Yes. That debris is now spread out into two distinct tracks. Because they're still going in that direction now, but all that debris is now spreading out in that direction. That's right. And, and to this day, you can look at yeah. how much debris there is in different orbits. And you can see a peak here due to that breakup. Yep. And another peak due to the uh, Chinese anti-satellite. And was this probably another breakup of probably some degree? Is. Exactly. So you can see that just two breakups caused a very large fraction of the space debris. This is a very dangerous orbit to go on. No one's going to launch a, a, a network of communication satellites, what's that, just under 800 yeah. kilometers up. That orbit is already now too dangerous. I guess if you're going back to your World War One battlefield thing, yes, there's lots of bullets in all direction, but you don't want to stand in one particular area where there's a gun pointed at you, and that's that That's case. right. And these things don't only explode because of collisions yeah. or because yeah. of anti-satellite weapon testing. They can also, this is the different reason for things to break up. And most of the case, it's unknown or anomalous, so we don't know why it broke up. Yeah. Uh, but propulsion, you've got these tanks with hydrazine, yeah. typically, the thrusters inside them, and that fuel can sit there and sometimes just go bang. Yep. And that can blow things up. And you can see the number is you know, 20 or 30 a year. So you want to make sure that your spacecraft's not Let's say it's sh shut down five years ago because the electronics was fried by the radiation. Yeah, that's right. Um, but it's still got some propellant in it, and it's sitting there in space steadily corroding from radiation damage and getting hotter and colder. And at some point, it might explode and produce a cloud of debris. And I guess that's the other thing is, you know, we, for all the things that we talked about earlier uh, in this course about the, the space environment, the things you have to test, those things can then cause accidents as well and cause fragmentation issues from electrical faults yeah. to everything else. And the real worry is what's called the yeah. Kessler syndrome, which is that this could all get out of control. Now, this Kessler syndrome isn't new, right? It's been around for a while, at least this That's idea. That's right. Um, so the basic idea is, let's imagine one object hits another in space yeah. and produces a cloud of debris. We saw that one anti-satellite yep. missile hitting us produced 3,000 pieces of debris. Now, those 3,000 pieces of debris may then go and hit other things. That's right. And blow them into pieces, which then produce so maybe if you know, 100 of those 3,000 hit something else, and each of those then broke up into 3,000. That's right. You can see the number, amount of debris in space is going to incline That's right. very rapidly. Basically, what happens is that you're going to have a collision which produces enough debris, and that debris is more likely to hit something else. And then it can get a runaway. That's right. And this could indeed make whole parts of low Earth orbit un inhabitable, just so many bullets flying around kind in a particular of orbit. Like those, those anti-satellite tests, at least that we saw, or the collision, right? Yeah. Where because that propagation of all that stuff is blown out, no one wants to put a spacecraft in there because they know it's going to get hit and even more is going to break up. And of course, it's something that could happen deliberately in a space That's war. right. Um, if you're a... I mean, the US probably relies more on military space than anybody else. If you're fighting against the US, you might want to do this deliberately. Blow up a bunch of satellites in key orbits, and then the debut of other satellites and other satellites and might make that whole region of space uninhabitable. And then you've got the advantage if you don't rely on spacecraft. And I guess that's the thing, right? If you target key orbits, as we've talked about before, where the, f certain frequencies and operations are in very specific orbits, you can target those methodically and cause damage. Yeah, so it's, it's a real problem. Yeah. And of course, the more things there are in space, 
the more likely this is to happen. That's right. And lots of spacecraft are being launched at the moment.